reading, please. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you for being, for listening tonight. There's so many issues that are we still need to discuss. Um, but I, I feel I'm, I'm the best candidate for the, for this position. I'm the only candidate up here who's been on both sides of the courtroom, a prosecutor for five years and a criminal defense attorney for 25 years. I've seen just about every kind of case and, and, and encountered every kind of situation that happens in, a, in the universe of the criminal justice system. Although there are always surprises, that is part and parcel to understanding what is needed to run this office and to uh, mentor young attorneys and to make sure the criminal justice is really being accomplished in Berkshire County. I've also managed a multi-million dollar business for two years, so the management piece, which, which is huge for the district attorney, I have those skill set and I successfully a successful history with respect to that. Uh, but most of all, I've been walking this walk and talking this talk for a progressive platform for at least 15 years. And some of you know I ran against David Capeless, District Attorney David Capeless in 2006, and the platform I had then is pretty much the platform I have now. And it just has taken that long for, for the rest of the county and people to really wake up to that the old ways aren't working. And I knew when the crime reform bill got passed that this was the opportunity, that now Berkshire County is ready for alternative sentencing, diversion programs, treating our addicts instead of locking them up, and, and prioritizing violent crime over drug cases because we want our community to be safe. And, then, and to also work with the community to bring crime down. That is, a, that is a responsibility of the district attorney's office. And I, it's, the time has come. I've got the experience to do it. I've been thinking about this for years. I have a, a history showing my, um, my passion for crime reform. And so I'm the best candidate for this job. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? Sure. Sure. Um, so let me just say a couple of things. First of all, that. Um, District Attorney's Office is not about locking up addicts. Now I can tell you that, you can ask any prosecutor who works in my office, they will tell you that. You can go to the jail and see who's actually doing time for a possession offense or addiction offense. It is not true, that does not happen. Secondly, my office is about achieving justice and not convictions. Um, I, the, the suggestion of that is something um, that, I will tell you, rankles me just a little bit since I've been in this business for 30 years. It is not about convictions, it is about doing justice. Ask anybody who's worked for me. I don't measure that success by the conviction, I measure that success by the effort that's been made to get justice. That's just how we operate in the office and that's how people who do this work, particularly under my administration, will continue to do the work. I also will, also to take the opportunity, I will, uh, in terms of the uh, cultural competency, I, I will respond to uh, Attorney Harrington's remark. I will not take my advice or guidance of my office from a candidate for this office that has not ever done this work. That idea of doing cultural competency is my idea. It was, it was an idea that was actually is, is, is fostered by the criminal justice reform bill. So I do take some offense, and I, with all due respect to Attorney Harrington, to suggest that I took that idea from a debate is simply not the case. My platform is compassion where appropriate and a consequence of needed. I'm drawing upon my experience in order to do that. Um, I do think the opiate crisis is something that we do need to take, um, a, not just a hard look at, but it's something we need to do something about. And that means partnering with everybody. That means prosecuting uh, vigorous those who will prey on the addicted, and it means treating the addicted. That's the way we, we start to make some progress. It took a long time to get there. It won't be a sprint out of it, but we've got to start working towards it. Thank you. Okay. This election on September 4th is a tremendously important opportunity for this community. Uh, it's an opportunity to move forward into the future uh, with a criminal justice system that is based on research and evidence and best practices, which is very much uh, what drove the criminal justice reform bill, or uh, to stay stuck in the past of doing the same things that we've been doing for the past 30 years that we can all see before with our own eyes have not been effective and this have not made this community as safe as it can make as it can be. Uh, I think that the way that you can judge somebody's or the best way to predict somebody's future actions is by looking at their past behavior. 
uh, because it certainly is very easy for politicians to uh, make all kinds of statements and all kinds of promises and talk to you about you know what our values really are but i think that the way that you judge people is really based on their track record uh, i have been uh, working for justice i have been working as a criminal defense attorney for the past 15 years i have represented people in uh, at all stages of the criminal process at trial appeal post-conviction work i've represented people in cases ranging from minor of two teenagers fighting on Facebook to people who are facing capital murder. And I've also worked, you know, working, representing my clients, finding uh, practical solutions to tough problems in civil litigation contexts. And I've represented people uh, in employment discrimination cases and consumer protection cases and divorce and family law. And the, really what we need here in a district attorney so that we can move forward into the future is somebody who shares the values of this community and uh, can, can look at the big picture and work together and work very aggressively on tackling these tough problems. Thank you.